Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and today we're talking with Amy Villanueva from the Kawaiian Collective. And I'm super excited because it's really, really, uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing they're doing. So we're going to talk three main topics today. First one, obviously, Bamboo Kawaiian Cooperative, which is transforming bamboo homes or bamboo into homes for every Filipino. Second, uh, construction innovations. Third, um, how the, the whole journey was of getting started with the help of Base Baha'i, a nonprofit organization in the Philippines, which is uh, funded by Hilti Foundation. Um, yeah, so that's our, our journey. So, Amy, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, JJ. It's great to be here. <laughs> great to have you here and uh, hopefully learn a lot about insights about uh, how, how things um, have been evolving there, how you, you were able to transform this. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, you're based in the Philippines, of course, and right now you're in the U.S. Um, so um, how uh, do you uh, describe the Kawaiian Cooperative, cooperative um, Collective <laughs> yourself? What's the intro you normally give to people who are interested to learn about uh, what your mission is? Yeah. Yeah, so in brief, uh, Kauaian Collective is a bamboo lumber yard, essentially. Uh, we're processing bamboo to elevate it as a durable building material and ultimately provide better homes for all Filipinos, as you said. Um, yeah, that's our elevator pitch. Um, <laughs> but really, yeah, we're, we're, we're honored to be here. Um, we're, our journey in bamboo has just been five years so far, really in earnest, full time, five years. Um, and uh, it's been great to uh, like enter into this realm, um, which is still relatively small and well connected. Um, but we've sure. been like warm, warmly received um, and gotten a lot of help from people along the way. And so uh, happy to like share. Uh, do our part in um, sharing our lessons learned as well. Awesome. And um, the, to talk a little bit more about the collective. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's employee based, right? This is like a, a kind of uh, uh, a set, interesting setup, which uh, is challenging too, because you really have to have like the right people, the right positions mm -hmm. or roles, right? So um, I, I read somewhere something like 40 employees or something like that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for opening this topic. It is a big one. We are, as I said, five years in, and as a cooperative, we're only one year in. Um, oh. We, when we got started, we started as a sole proprietorship with my husband and I being the co-founders. Um, and uh, we were always looking, you could see it in our name, Hawaiian Collective was the name we were founded under. We had this idea in mind at some point, but we got some good advice early on to not start a business and a co-op at the exact same time, because um, that's taking off quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, we took that uh, we took that to heart. We started as a sole proprietorship. Um, and then last year, or really in the last two years, we began the conversion to co-op. And it's with the uh, employees who, um, have been some of them, and we, we started as a team of seven, so much smaller than we are today. Yeah. Um, and and there are still many of those initial seven that are now uh, cooperative members and leaders in the organization. Um, but yeah, it's it was we really were gravitated toward this model as we considered how would this business grow. Um, we were always a social enterprise. And when you're comparing that uh, to, you know, what the growth options out there, there's uh, the traditional corporation and there's co-op. Um, mm -hmm. the, the social enterprise in us felt like the co-op values made a lot of sense. Um, it's already kind of baked into the legal structure of a co-op um, to be a social enterprise. And then just the state of the bamboo industry in the Philippines, uh, what we're working with are bamboo as a wild stock, largely held by, you know, smallholder farmers. Um, harvesting is the same uh, people, but the, the, 
employees of the of the of the factory are all rural, um, you know, uh, local um, islanders. And so what do they have to invest in a corporation? You know, maybe not as much, but yeah. as yeah. a collective, they have a lot. Have so, a lot. Um, so it made a lot of sense uh, to appeal to them as our initial investors. Yeah. And and was that because in the Philippines there are like is is that to have cooperative is it something like common or or is it not common anymore or what I mean this is also kind of important right that the, the like yeah. the environment let's say where mm -hmm. you want to set up that uh, probably uh, in in some places it's not gonna work and it seems like in in the Philippines is it's really it does work making yeah. it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The co-ops are definitely around in the Philippines and have been for a while. Um, and people are particularly used to them in uh, in the province, in the rural setting. There's a lot of agricultural co-ops. Um, what they don't tend to do is get much bigger than maybe mm -hmm. their, their um, one uh, community. Um, and that's something that we're trying to do. And of course, there are, there are always... Uh, uh, examples that that do get big. Um, certainly, microfinance co-ops are are all over the country, and and um, yeah, the you're used to seeing that kind of model. And so we're trying to say, well, why not with bamboo? And so yeah. to to get the idea right, so basically you buy from uh, uh, like uh, the small farmers. So let's say like a hundred uh, uh, small farmers who have like their plots of bamboo. Um, I've read also that, uh, you have a, a specific or special bamboo there, which is called Tinik. Yeah. Is that nice. Bambusa Blumenea <laughs> or something like that, right? The, the yes. scientific yes. name? Yeah. Okay. And um, basically you, you, you pay directly the small farmers and then you, you, um, uh, uh, you, you transform it into the poles or into a boards or whatever you're going to use for the construction, right? And right. Um, how's the, or what can you share about the numbers? So um, probably before that, they got like an X amount for bamboo, which was mostly for scaffolding or, or did they use it also for construction? Was there a market there for those small farmers for the bamboo poles or was it like very like unexistent probably yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty much pretty much um it's basically been it's called backyard bamboo um it's been used by the family for generations for for personal projects housing fencing um just on the farm um and then of course occasionally maybe a, a resort would open up and they would buy in bulk like for their project but that's about it um there hasn't been any sort of real um income growth stream. of the industry yeah 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 beyond yeah. the 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 small payogs beach huts that people are used to seeing um yeah yeah and what can you tell us about this uh um kawaiian tinik uh, bamboo from the philippines is it is it similar to uh maybe the the mosso or the guadua or how how should yeah. we imagine this bamboo how is it yeah yeah <laughs> so um i'm i'm glad to say it's coming under increasing uh research more and more um universities are are checking it out we've shipped to hong kong and uh wow. worked with universities in um the UK and the US, um, as they're adding now Bamboo Sublumiana to the the anthem out there of, of construction grade um, bamboos. And so it's more on the uh, spectrum of Guadua than let's say Moso, which is um, not structured, not good for constructions. Not so. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah, it's, it's a very strong bamboo uh, species. And it's endemic to the Philippines, it's widespread um, from from seaside to mountaintop. It's uh, pretty hardy and, uh, and- How tall is it? It gets, uh, well, so we harvest, we use the midsection, which is an average mm -hmm. of 10 meters. Um, mm -hmm. So we leave about 25% still in the field. Yeah, so it Organic gets, matter. it's 15 meters. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. It's good. Yeah. 15, and does, is it thorny? or not thorny? Yes. 
That is what Tanik translates to in ah. English. Thorn. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the spiky important. bamboo. Right, because yeah. the hardest thing of thorny bamboo is much more challenging than, let's say, a Dendrocalamus asper, where basically it has little, sometimes little hairs that maybe, but it's not a big deal. But when you have like thor thorns, like big thorns, yeah. or even small thorns, but thorns is like serious yeah. uh, uh, thing there. If you get that in your fingers or... <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it takes some maintenance for sure. Um, yeah. And so lots of machete or uh, how mm. do you, uh, is it manual work probably? Most of you don't have machines there probably because they're small farmers. So yeah. they kind of right. do everything on site and you get mm -hmm. the 10 meter bamboo pole already thorn free. Would right. you pick up or do they bring it to uh, the uh, to the collective? Um, right. So we we the the harvesters typically are responsible for getting it to the roadside where it'll get picked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's the other yeah. thing, right? Because depending on the on the topography, let's say I, I've never been to the Philippines, but probably it's not all flat, right? So uh, <laughs> so uh, you could yeah. have the hills or steep hills, and, and on the roadside you have accessibility. You can get the truck there, pick it up, right. and and go else. The, the the other part is the hard part where they probably have animals or on the shoulder or whatever works, right? Yeah. 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 That's crossfit yeah. for real. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. The ones who have been harvesting bamboo know what we're talking about. The other ones, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and okay, so um, I get a much better uh, picture of uh, how this bamboo there is. It seems really to be uh, similar to uh, the guadua from Latin America, um, what you've been sharing so far. The color also, is it like uh, uh, green? And then once it start, once you harvest it and all that, it, it dries out and gets like uh, a little bit yellowish, grayish. Golden. Golden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah depending on the sun ray and all the, the external factors, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you go, the, uh, you, you and you do the whole, um, how do you preserve the bamboo um, in, in, on your operation? What's the process you use or the best yeah. way you've figured out so far? Yeah. So um, we have been, we were taught uh, by Base Baha'i um, when we got started. They have a, a treatment process that they've been researching, they've been using now for over 10 years. Um, and it's largely, uh, it's, it's similar to, um, uh, what we've got going, um, through INBAR, right. Um, the mm -hmm. international ba ba bamboo and Rathon, um, published, uh, research on, uh, the borax and boric acid, uh, soak, so soaking treatment. Um, what we do before we do the soak is a, um, wash and dry, Mm -hmm. Um, so all within two weeks of harvest, uh, while the, while the bamboo is still green, uh, we get the, the poles, um, all, uh, punched so that the node segment is, is so you take open. like a big bar and you put yep. it through the bamboo pole. So 10 meter big bar. And it's like really like, yes. pop, 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 like that. Okay, yes. Yeah. Punch all yeah. those nodes and yeah. anyone can do it because the nodes are actually quite thin, you know, yeah, they're um, not so, so it doesn't hard. take a lot of effort um there and it's it's very uh gratifying actually <laughs> um but yeah yeah so we punch the so. nodes and then we get we get those green poles into just running water um mm -hmm. so that way we can remove the starch that's um so attractive to the powder beetle um sugars get that, yeah, yeah get that sugar out of the pole um right away just using natural water just using our our uh running water Mm -hmm. And uh, then we prop them up to dry, sun dry, um, and we're looking to get the pole to about 30% of its normal um, w at, at harvest moisture content, right? So mm -hmm. not fully dry, but okay. dr dry like enough. Drier. <laughs> it's, it's drier. It's starting to, it's starting to go yellow, but it's not, yeah, yeah. right? Like it needs, it, it, and then it goes into treatment. So um that way we're kind of ensuring that the treatment is really absorbed. Um, mm -hmm. So the poles, the starch has been removed, um, but the pole is still green enough that it can absorb that, that treatment solution. Yep. Um, and that's really kind of the final guarantee against um, the termite. So. 
and and basically yeah. so just to to share with our uh, um, people who are uh, understanding or who haven't seen it yet so basically uh, once you washed it uh, you wait until 30 percent um still humid right so you measure it yeah and then um is it the bath solution where you submerge them or do you put like yes. something on the head and the bottom so it's a bath solution you put them in a big swimming pool for bamboo 10 meter uh, long and you put some weight yep. on top of it yep and you leave That's it right. like for two weeks one week or right for for uh it's one week with the borax boric acid Mm -hmm. One week, okay. And you have a specific, yeah, yeah uh, amount of borax, which is a salt, a natural salt. But mm -hmm. depending on where you are, it's 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 easier or harder and more expensive to to get because it's not something you get in the supermarket. Like, ah, oh, I'd like uh, forty kilos of borax, please, right? So it, it's uh, really. I guess no. it, the Philippines is maybe you've got a, a good market for it because it is available not in the grocery store, but it is available in the hardware store. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. yeah. So that's it good. Is yeah, it, well it really depends widespread. where you are. That's why I'm, I'm mentioning it um, because there are many ways how to treat the bamboo, yeah. and I think it's really yeah. something super key to 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 be aware of and and to share. Because yes. if you don't do the treatment, you can just leave it. You, you can just forget it, right? Because in right. the worst case, in six months, you have nothing left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's a pity it's so for true. all the work and, and everything, mm -hmm. right? So bamboo yeah. treatment is really key. And, and there is not one way. Yeah. There are several ways to do it. But you have to do yes. it right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. And so you can confirm that. And you have been building like for five years now, uh, bamboo mm -hmm. construction in the Philippines. And you have already the experience of, of houses, bamboo houses you've built, which are five years old, right? Um, let's see. Uh, well, let's be fair. <laughs> our first <laughs> our first year was harvesting and treatment. Uh, so yeah, the, the houses, um, yeah. Four years. I mean, yeah, well, let's say four years. Let's say four okay. years, yeah. But it's good. But then, I mean, of course, yeah, we've been supplying um, Base Baha'i, who was already started, right? So, okay. yeah, they've got they've got much older housing um, projects um, that have been around for a decade now. Yeah. Okay, they have more experience there, and they've been supporting you. But that's like our third mm -hmm. uh, topic, right after the second one. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. 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 But um, but it's it's uh, I think it's it's super valuable to know. Oh, we we've been able. To, to to transform bamboo into houses and look yeah. they they're still here after four years right or after mm -hmm. a hurricane or after earthquake I don't know how uh, yeah. the climate is in the Philippines but possibly you do have hurricanes yes is it something we call there? Them typhoons typhoons okay they yeah. come off the Pacific yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's the same thing right it's really it's, it's yep. a super super big storm and it's windy and it's uh, yeah it's uh, probably not so nice to be in a house where you're not sure if the house is going to uh, survive yeah. it because, <laughs> yeah. So, but Absolutely. bamboo obviously is flexible and well-built bamboo homes do survive almost anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, of course, our home is uh, used, built with our with our product. We had to be the first ones to try it before we'd force anyone, convince anyone else force never <laughs> no no um, convinced. Yeah. to to live to live in a bamboo home um so yeah we built we built our house and and moved in and within the first month that we had moved in um typhoon odette hit the philippines that was december of 2021 and um yeah that was a sleepless night for ray and myself um we were up just listening to the wind howling and the roofs flying off our neighbors' houses and trees coming wow. down and concerning. We were just like, let's hope, let's hope. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> everything, everything we've been talking about and you know, yeah, we we literally got to put yeah. it to the test within a month wow. of moving in. Um, so you, you guys and, were the prototype. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the lab yeah. rats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, cool. And I love I, that. I'm, I'm happy to say, I mean, the house was just solid. It was rock solid. It didn't even creak. And uh, there was barely any rain that blew in. We were just like, wow, we're, this is this is amazing. Um, so, so, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. Good testimony. 
that's the, the second topic we, we were going to talk about, which is bamboo construction innovation. And you mentioned yeah. right now that um, you have like innovation you've implemented in the bamboo houses. So um, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I, uh, yeah, basically, um, again, with the, um, you know, guidance of Base Baha'i and their research in bamboo, um, Quine Collective has been able to uh, adapt this technology called cement bamboo frame technology. Um, mm -hmm. It is the modernization of the Bahareke, which is you know, what our, our ode. Um, the Latin our American, like. Exactly. Our gratitude yeah. to, um, to South America, Latin America for um, already putting this into the building code, right? Um, which is something the Philippines is on the cusp of doing, but we're not quite there yet. Um, but anyway, are, are, it's... It... Sorry, uh, just... Go ahead. Uh, are the Philippines part of the INBAR, International Bamboo and Rattan Organization? Because they could yes. help to set up the building code there with uh, uh, all the, the contacts they have. But probably it's a, a, yes. like a lot of paperwork and... and uh, the, That's it. So it's going to yeah. take time. Okay, it's okay. in process. It's in process. Okay. Exactly. So how, but, how is yeah. it now legally with the bamboo houses there? Are they yeah. seen as temporal housing or something like that? Right. Or? Right. Yeah. So um, certainly for private homes, for family homes, um, it's it's at fifty percent of all Filipinos still live in bamboo houses. Oh so, wow. Um, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's widely used, um, but not treated, right? Not treated mm. bamboo, and it's um, it tends <laughs> to be uh, kind of seen as like a last resort. It's yeah. it's Poor man's you know, timber. it's exactly yeah. Yeah. it's the house that everyone wants to get out of. Um, yeah, sadly. And then <laughs> the other end of the spectrum is is the high end, the high end resort. Um, so then you see as a badge of wealth and and. Um, just some, of course, like beautiful, inspiring construction, but it's unattainable, um, yep. for the vast majority. So, uh, for us, for Kauai Collective, it's always been our mission, right? All better homes for all Filipinos, um, has been to kind of fill this gap and like demonstrate that bamboo isn't one or the other. It's, it, it's, it's it can be so much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, so yeah, so cement bamboo frame, uh, really showed itself as a way that we could kind of blend modern amenities with, um, traditional bamboo construction, um, in a way that would be durable, low maintenance. And what we're working on is like low cost, making it mm -hmm. more and more affordable. So, um, yeah, so how, yeah, how is it? How should I, you mentioned cement, bamboo and frame. So yes. in my mind, I have like a, a, a timber frame, which is, do you have, should we show a share yeah. a picture maybe or a presentation? Because it's like from the That's three great. words, it's really a, a big question mark. What is it? Yeah. How does yeah. it look? How, what does that end up looking like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are we talking about? What is this innovation? Yeah. <laughs> so it's bah Bahareke 2.0, basically. Yeah. Like. Um, kind of exactly exactly okay so i will put on um the vi this video and kind of talk over uh -huh. um because i know not everyone can see but um exactly yeah, some of get... our listeners are, are spotify listeners who enjoy uh, listening to the think bamboo podcast while cooking but uh, they know they can uh, check the youtube uh, think bamboo channel and uh, get additional information like the presentation we're seeing right now here we go yeah oh and then i changed <laughs> sorry jj that was a beautiful setup and then i thought like oh but i've got a better video for um another one so it's loading right now it is loading it is loading i'm gonna get I'm gonna get. Um, there we are. It's the it's the house tour. Oh, are you so, seeing this? Yeah, it's a beautiful video. We oh, see now okay. bamboo plants in the Philippines okay. harvesting. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll just let that run. <laughs> um, so there, you're going to see the full, the full uh, bamboo value chain, as we say, from harvest through. There's the drying racks um, and a little bit of construction going on. Here's some. That's my husband Ray doing design of our house. Wow. Um, and there's some finished construction. I none of this yet is cement bamboo frame. Um, let's see if it shows up eventually. Um, okay, but it's, it's are... really cool. I see lots of bamboo applications everywhere: chairs, furniture, bamboo yes. boards. Uh, the yeah. value chain transforming bamboo into ah, I saw a bamboo um, structural engineered bamboo board, something like that. Yeah, more yeah, boards. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. the story behind what we do with all the offcuts. Because about 25% of every pole mm -hmm. uh, we can't use for construction, right? It's either too skinny, it's too crooked. Um, so we turn that into um, the engineered products that you saw in the video. Um, and that becomes a great way to turn something that was otherwise waste into um, a valuable product. <laughs> Awesome. So um, you, you're not only using a total renewable natural product like bamboo, but you're also like using the waste of the bamboo to transform it in other added value products. Yes. This is, this is yeah. perfect. This is just beautiful. This, yeah. That's, and it's key. It's key, yeah. right? Um, yeah, yeah. You've kind of already sunk the costs into that material. So <laughs> what can you do with it? What can you turn it into? So yeah. Um, all right, so thanks for your patience, and um, I am at, on on our YouTube channel now. Um, okay. Digging up this video of our house, um, which, there it is. Okay, so now I can share this tab instead. And how do you call those uh, panels, or what's the, like, official name you're using for this bamboo innovation? Like... Uh, what is it, modular building, or what's the, what's the wording you use? Um, okay, so um, for for yes, we're using right. So we're doing prefabricated um, bamboo building components. Um, Pre okay, and that's yeah, that's pretty, yeah. So yeah, Pre okay, so that's you a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pre yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, it, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that um, as we as we show this video. Okay. Um, okay. I'll talk over that. So can you see this video now? This is the bamboo and bato. Okay. Not yet. I, I think you have to share again. Okay. And All right. Select the window and then we... Okay. It, it will sh change the, the layout. Okay. Great. Um, got it. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I see the base. I see bamboo poles. So this is like the the, the first yeah. setup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is like a really helpful visual to see how cement bamboo frame comes together. Mm -hmm. Um. So and again, this is the this is actually what became our house. So this is the model, of course, but you'll eventually see the real house. Mm -hmm. Um. So there's the bamboo going in, and it's very similar to lath and plaster construction. Um, and there's the, uh, plaster that goes along the outside, the cement plaster that goes along the outside, protecting the bamboo from the sun and rain. Um, there's the house. So, um, the components, there's, the there's our dog. <laughs> yeah. There's my, there's my husband, Ray. Um, cool. yeah. So Ray's an architect and a Filipino American. And, um, yeah. So wow, he, beautiful. He felt, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. We see the inside of the, this is like the second floor. Oh, it's like, yes. wow. Oh, it looks beautiful. A little bamboo chapel. Yeah. Yeah. And with the colors yeah. also the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's a yeah. pretty beautiful house you have there. Bamboo house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 um, for those who are just listening, um, yeah, visually you kind of I picture it's a giant, it's an A-frame house, um, modern house. It's 70 square meters um, slab, but when you count the loft, 
and the porch area. I think the whole house is 140 square meters. Um, and um, yeah, it is 85% bamboo. But from the outside, you might not know it. Um, certainly, if you approach the house from three sides, it just looks like a standard kind of cement hollow block house. But um, that's really just the thin plaster that is on the outside of the um, bamboo uh, framing. So you have between the outside and the inside bamboo, you have the... You have you have a, a what we call a satsa. It's the flattened bamboo, the crushed bamboo, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a, a bit of chicken wire, mm -hmm. and then the plaster is it's, is is put on right onto that. Um, so the cement. So yes, the yeah, cement. cement plaster. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. right. And right. then on the other side, after the cement, that's it. And that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Then it's just painted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what we found in building with this style is we were able to save about 20% on labor, actually, because of using the the wall panels versus kind of laying a house brick by brick. Um, the, the house goes up much faster. Um, oh. And then, yeah, because we've protected the house um, from the outside, it's got... Uh, large metal roof um and then the the cement plaster along the outside um so that the bamboo on the inside is um yeah it's completely protected from sun and rain um it's already treated therefore this house is guaranteed by the philippine housing authority for 25 years but we know it's much much longer durability than that that house isn't going to go anywhere <laughs> and Probably the roof has like 25 years, the, the thin metal roof, the best quality is like 25 years. So probably it'll have just to change the roof and, and the bamboo will still be like the first day. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Awesome, okay. So, um, okay, so the, this is uh, quite interesting um, because obviously you do use cement, but uh, in, in uh, much smaller qualities than uh, building uh, uh, like at the normal house where you use a lot of cement, you use bricks and all that. So it's lightweight. Uh, it's, it's not heavy. The house is not that heavy. You use right. a lot of organic material, which is bamboo, right. <laughs> which you right. have there. And yeah. um, probably it's, I imagine it's also fresh to be in there. If it's hot outside, it's fresh inside, mm -hmm. right? It's very, it, yeah, the house breathes. It's very, very cool. Um, we use a lot of passive uh, cooling. So there's a ridge vent all along the top of the house that allows all the hot air to escape. The, uh, the lower um, parts of the house are open on all sides so that cool. the air can pass through. Because yeah, the climate yeah. is, is like uh, humid, tropical in where you are in the Philippines, right? Very. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I also noticed on the roof, you have like the thin roof and uh, mm -hmm. on the, uh, uh, below it, right? You have like mm -hmm. the, the bamboo uh, slacks or how do you call it? The... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's much nicer to see and probably you hear less when it rains, the noise. Yes. Yes. And the yeah. heat probably. So it's double, triple use. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ceiling um, we found like dropping the temperature inside um any of our construction projects now uh at least uh you know two degrees it, it, at least um yeah. but it's 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 a crit it's amazing right it's just such a thin little extra add on yeah. piece um and it and it looks beautiful you know compared to having yeah. the the thin uh, like the the metallic roof which is like yes. kind of the the using but not so it's like living in a tin box or or a, yeah a tuna yeah can. <laughs> yes yeah 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 interesting wow okay i love the how the house the the roof is really like big i mean you need big roofs there because of the tropical rain right so it look, depends a little bit yeah. where you are but it, i mean looks absolutely beautiful so um really cool so this thank is thank you <laughs> you're welcome this yeah. is uh the the main uh construction innovation probably is is this um uh, Bareke 2.0, or, or how you right. said, a prefabricated bamboo uh, component, right? 
Well, that's what we've gone into next, right? So, oh, so okay. I think what what we were studying with it with our first house was like, yeah, okay, the bahareke, um, the cement bamboo frame design and build. And what we were learning uh, pretty quickly is uh, it's great. It works really well in the tropics um, for for a building, but still there are a lot of people that are not comfortable with building in that style. So um, what we realized as a company was the more we could prefabricate, the more easily then people could say, all right, now that you've already done the bit with the bamboo and all I have to do is assemble, cool, I'm ready, you know, like send me the panels. Um, so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, where the, that's where the prefab has come in is like, okay, so if we can take care of the wall panels and the roof purlins and all of that, um, then we've had that many more people decide like, okay, this will be the material I'll use. Um, so, so last year we had a three times increase in our, <laughs> wow, um, in our sale of just treated poles and also the prefabricated components. Um, yeah, yeah, it was tremendous. Yeah. So the the uh, prefabricated bamboo components are mainly for the wall and the roof. And how big are the elements? Like they have to be transportable, right? Yeah, yeah. So you get you get limited, but. Um, Pretty much by uh, the twenty foot container size is our is our, is our limit, um, and so yeah. But it, it, we're we're getting very creative with our trusses and and you know building collapsible trusses so that um, when they go into the container, um, they they can bundle flat, um, and then when they get unloaded on site, they can pop up and just be drilled into place. Um, and then with the walls, uh, probably, you know, the four meters would be the, the max that we could do a, a already finished wall um, component. And so that really leads to, yeah, um, how does Kauai Collective then intend to uh, encourage more and more Filipinos all across the country um, with these limitations of size and, and distance and everything? And that's where... Uh, going back to the co-op model, it's all about um, how do you branch out? How do you get multiple locations and distributed distribute this um, technology so that more people have the option, more accessibility? Because in, in your example, Philippines is like an island, but it's still quite big, right? So uh, what's the distance from uh, where you are to the further distance where you could build a house? What are we talking about? Like, yeah 500 kilometers or more or yeah yeah and and of course then there's a lot of sunk cost in um the logistics of just getting the material there so um while we do ship all over the country it that's pretty limited that's you know um expensive yeah that's very expensive so only a certain customer can do that um huh? at the majority of our of our customer base is on our island um where yeah. it makes a lot of sense. It's much more practical. <laughs> yeah. So when, when you say our island, they're like more than one island and you're on like a bigger island. And how yeah. big is the island to get an idea? Yeah, yeah. We're on Negros um, and Negros is split into two provinces. But yeah, uh, it is the fourth largest island of the Philippines. Um, mm -hmm. But um, by a by a large margin, the biggest the biggest areas are much much bigger islands. Um, so it's funny. The Philippines has five hundred inhabited islands. Wow. Inhabited islands. Um, so yeah, again, it, I think as any business, yeah, in in the Philippines, you have to be thinking distributed and like multiple locations. Um, it's just the only model that makes sense in this in this environment. Um, so, uh, yeah, you want to be close to the bamboo and the bamboo is all over, um, everywhere. And then, and then the market. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think what's cool is we've been able to demonstrate even in a small market like Negros Oriental is, is, is small. Our biggest city is, uh, maybe I think through 350,000, um, Population. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Check. Well, yeah. Population. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good. That's good. That gives an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. basically, um, your your um idea is to um replicate 
the the cooperative on other islands in the Philippines. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That demonstrate yeah. that it's it's really viable as a rural manufacturing business. Yeah. Cool. So probably will it be like uh, people who already are part of the some of those forty employees or owners who will then go there, uh, most likely, right? Because they have the know-how, they have uh, uh, they have the connections, and they know how. Because if you start with somebody from scratch, it's going to be much more work, probably. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's um, we're early on in this in this next part of our journey, but, um, I think it's going to be a combination. Um, mm -hmm. and for sure, our team is, um, available and it's great growth for them as well to be able to, um, transfer their skills and knowledge in a different location and, and, and help others get up and running. Um, but then also, like we're we're adamant that uh, that it be a local operator who really knows that mm -hmm. area. Um, so we're really looking for those key partners who are um, interested in kind of getting into this full time, because um, that's what it takes. <laughs> so we can have a shout out here. Any Filipino who are into bamboo and want to uh, work with or collaborate with the Kawayan Collective Cooperative. Uh, contact Amy Villanueva here, and uh, yes. she'll be happy to uh, to uh, see um, what can be done because this is like one of the big next steps. I understand to to grow on uh, one of the 500 islands in the Philippines. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Okay, this is really exciting. Of course, um, um, this is like a very different setup as if you have like a big island like Indonesia, for example, which is one. Mm -hmm mainly one big island from my understanding um uh, having 500 islands like super fragmented and you can't just take the ship or the car and oh let's let's drive to that island. you need you need a ship right and uh, it's everything is more complicated and and, and uh, expensive so it, it changes um but um it's interesting i mean every place is unique and and this is uh, even more unique <laughs> having so many islands Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I think I got a, a very good um, insight regarding the the bamboo house. So you have probably different types of bamboo um, homes. You said um, yeah. uh, they can be bigger, smaller, uh, more economic, uh, luxury. So probably you have you worked also with uh, with uh, uh, like tourist resorts, or is it something uh, you're not? Uh, Yes, you're you're nodding. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. So you have like a huge spectrum of um, of buildings, I assume. Uh, like uh, probably like a tiny house. Like what's the smallest mm -hmm. bamboo homes you've been building in 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 uh, square meters? What are we talking about? Fifty or? Yeah, fourteen. Fourteen and a half <laughs> square meters. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. Wow, that's really small. And that's for yeah. like a. Uh, people or is it like a garage yeah. or a car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Um yeah, I that that typhoon I mentioned. Um yeah, yeah uh that that was actually a uh so um it it really hit uh the section of the Philippines that we're based in, um mm -hmm. particularly uh, about three hours drive north of us. Um a lot of families lost lost their homes. And um so it was a Great, kind of, as thing as these like terrible events uh, often can be also galvanizing events for like okay, how do we get this into a, a shape and size that um, makes sense for all you know these hundreds of families that are rebuilding? Um, mm -hmm. So that's where uh, the starter home kit came from, and um, we we worked on it. And it is it is as we say, it's just a starter home. It is not. Um, <laughs> It is, yeah, it's not, we, we recognize that uh, very quickly you're going to need to expand um, to make this a really livable space. But at the very least, what it is, is poor housing, right, um, that is going to survive the next storm. So you have a safe place um, awesome. uh, to go to. Yeah. Two questions. <laughs> Start at home. What's the price more or less in dollars and how fast can you set it up just to get an idea? Yeah. Yeah. So the price is, um, and I had to do the conversion into you. Yeah. Okay. 
So uh, it starts at 2,500 US um, oh. for this house. And this is, yeah, a, a structurally sound house that's gonna withstand the next typhoon or earthquake. Um, and um, yeah, it, you can um, move in. Uh, in and then it's finished in, that's right. The next question was how, how quick does it go up? Uh, it, it goes up in two weeks. So wow, it's so that's cool. That's important, fast. right? Because if it's an emergency, you can't say, oh, we'll need three months yeah. to get, <laughs> right? Like, no. where are they going to be yeah. for three months, right? Um, yeah. So, wow, okay, two weeks, that's fast. Yeah, that's really, uh, that's 14 days. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, uh, like something like $2,500, probably a micro loan or what is like the, 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 the setup people have there to uh yeah. to pay that micro loans yeah yeah cool. right yeah yeah there are micro loans and 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 typically um uh there is funding after disasters um okay. from the government well, and so yeah we've been uh working also with like catholic relief services um habitat for humanity these you know yeah, i i know international them. ngos yeah. yeah right that are often on the scene so they yeah. they know about this um technology they know about the starter home kit and they've already been investing in it um and helping uh different local governments of the community of the philippines um mm -hmm. uh prepare um so that hopefully for the next storm this is ready to go i mean it's really awesome to have like to be on site and be able to have starter homes you know instead of having to import them from let's say germany or the u.s and ship them there you have the material, you have the knowledge, yeah. you have the people there. So basically, right. uh, it's, 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 I mean, it's, I, I personally believe it's super cool what you're doing there um, and, and super important too. Um, and I'd love to also talk now about the exact opposite. So we've talked about the starter homes and now I'd love to talk about the, the, the craziest bamboo construction you've done. Um, just like maybe five minutes, but to show the the wide array you know of of bamboo yeah. construction because sometimes sadly i i think we we focus too much on on starter homes and like bamboo oh we'll build something quick and 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 cheap with bamboo but then people forget that you can build you can build the cathedral with bamboo mm -hmm. right yeah yeah and that's yeah that's why um let's can you share about like the, 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 the craziest or I don't know if it has to be the biggest or, or the, 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 the really the, the most beautiful construction you think, which is like mm. super luxury, which you have worked in the last mm. um, four or five years in the Philippines? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like I should have a picture going <laughs> on this one too, but um, okay. I, yeah. Our, um, you can describe see. it here and later when I will I publish it. the blog post, <laughs> okay. you can share good, the good, picture good. and we can include yeah. it there. So yeah, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, we were, we were very fortunate. We had one of those, uh, you know, well, hopefully not once ever, um, experiences, but, uh, definitely an early adopter, um, who is an art dealer in the Philippines. Um, and he happens to be from our small uh, provincial capital, um, Dumaguete. And so he had space and he had all he all he had in mind was something beautiful out of bamboo. Um, and he's just one of those ideal clients that the money was no option. And uh, he really was like, be creative, you know, like have fun with it. And um, so yeah, that was an incredible project to be a part of. The Dumaguete Bamboo Pavilion now stands as the biggest um, bamboo building in the Philippines. It's wow. Um, yeah, sixteen and a half meters tall, uh, five hundred and thirty-five square meters. Um, it's a wow. it's a pavilion um, space. It's an event space, and that's the other cool thing about it is that it's uh, open for, um, you know, public the events. The public. And wow, that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's so, beautiful. So I, I highly recommend uh, anyone anyone who's anywhere near Dumaguete needs to um, come come and check this place out. It's um, stunning. We got to partner with a local architect um, called Kauaian Designs, uh, headed by Ralph Abney, um, 
who's a young architect, who's a fantastic up and coming guy. Um, and he, yeah, he really like arranged this space um, in ode to both traditional um, Philippine architecture, like the large uh, meeting spaces that the, the tribes would have. Um, and then also the, just the material itself, it's a lot of straight bamboo, um, whole pole um, and arranged like they would be in, in nature in their clump formations um oh. and it's it's just stunning yeah it's it's a beautiful beautiful space um it was over three thousand poles and 500 ceiling panels and uh, oh, flying wow. collective got to supply it all um yeah it was it was tremendous wow um yeah definitely an <laughs> aspirational project that has caught some attention and is raising awareness of yeah the fuller you know capabilities. What? We should <laughs> share on the blog post one photo of the starter home and next to it the yeah. photo of, of this pavilion, just so people really get that anything is possible that with spectrum. bamboo. A spectrum, Definitely. exactly. You need something quick and fast, cheap, no problem. You want something amazing, truly yeah. unique, no problem yeah. either, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Wow, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> So this, uh, I think, is is truly important to have like the full spectrum. Even so, uh, from what I hear, yeah, you you have to work with uh, external people because it's like a slightly different than when you build a what was it, sixteen meter square meter to uh, five hundred square meter. I mean, uh, totally different yep. uh, uh, story, right? Um, yep. <laughs> But uh, absolutely, I can imagine very interesting, uh, really working on your passion uh, 24-7, 365 day, uh, uh, days a year. This is like, uh, you're not working, you're having fun, <laughs> kind of Definitely. funny way, right? Uh, amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sure a lot Ray, of people would love to. Uh, Ray and I say that to ourselves all the time. Best yeah. jobs ever. Really? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, yeah. just from what I listen, it's like, it sounds fantastic <laughs> so um now the third main topic which we have which is how did you get this started so you said uh, you and your uh, husband uh wanted like to uh, start like a, a company or uh, like a, uh or yeah in in, in bamboo but then uh, you want a long-term co cooperative and 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 things then you got like uh, help and and good insights and um, basically, you're there yeah. where you are now. So um, maybe you can elaborate a little bit the journey of how you got started and then also yeah. like recommend others anywhere on the planet Earth who want to <laughs> do something similar, you know, who want to yeah. really do something good and, and use bamboo, um, how th they should proceed. Because, um, well, um, yeah, it seems like it worked out pretty well. <laughs> It's working out. It's working out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I guess um, we we were a young family, um, and Ray, as I said, is Filipino American. Um, he grew up going back and forth between the U.S. and the Philippines, and kind of always uh, he had an example through his dad, who was a doctor, um, and would run medical missions back in the Philippines. And Ray ended up not 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 liking medicine, but he loved architecture and um, and still wanted to like find a way through his profession um, of of having that involvement with the Philippines, mm -hmm. having that tie in. Um, and so, um, yeah, it really started from that. Uh, and then on my end, uh, as a as a partner to Ray, I am a social entrepreneur. Um, I've always worked for businesses with a mission, um, and uh, some of that's been abroad, and some of that um, domestically in the U.S. So yeah, I was I've, I encouraged him um, <laughs> and and had no qualms uh, really about uh, going to explore the Philippines and seeing what might be possible there. Um, yeah, so that was it, it, I mean, ten years down to the last five years, let's say. I mean, it's a long journey, but then it went quickly in the last five years um, because we already had these uh, goals for ourselves. Um, so when 
uh, Ray met base Baha'i, um, like the puzzle pieces started to come together. Um, yeah. You know, he he was an architect looking to work with bamboo. Um, they were a research institute looking for um, partners that would be based in the field, kind of either supplying uh, treated bamboo poles or even doing construction. And so, uh, yeah, they, it was perfect timing. Um, one of those examples, right, of like, just tell enough people, be open <laughs> to what what's possible what's out there and you you're gonna meet you're gonna meet the partner right you're gonna meet the mm -hmm. your your life partner your business partner all of it <laughs> That's true. um so That's true. <laughs> yeah so there we were um and base was like great we need uh more supply in negros and we were like that's the island where we're from where we know the most people like that's where we want to be based um so so it was good timing um and so ray and i sold our quit our job sold our home in seattle and moved with our two young kids because we really were like yeah we're, we're at that stage as a family uh, we were like we we couldn't really see ourselves fitting into the 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 world around us in seattle um the corporate life that we were living and and um yeah just recognizing we were going to kind of miss out on our kids childhood because we had to work so long for so hard. yeah and <laughs> in separate offices and all of that. So we were like, all right, uh, let's try this. Let's try this I, family. I'm business. still having an uncertain future thinking of what's happening in the U S and Europe right now. Kind of sure. crazy times. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. So, so focusing yeah. in on like, yeah, the, the small realm of, of control we've got just within our mm -hmm. nuclear family and, and wanting to be, uh, wanting to be present for our kids childhood um but also like doing something that we cared about and that they could they could identify with that they could like be involved in at some point you know like um so yeah that was my my main desire and ray was like fine as long as it's using bamboo in the philippines <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we go beautiful um yeah, yeah hawaiian collective was born and um yeah, we, again, like, we can't say thank you enough to BASE for I, the reason why we got as far as we have um, in such a short period of time is all the knowledge transfer. Um, they literally based an engineer with us for the first six months um, who helped us set up the whole treatment process, train our team, you know, get us up and running. Wow. And so that's a, that's a, essentially the same model we're using, right, for, for anyone who comes up next is like how about we do the same for you um because mm -hmm. yeah we've seen how it works um and uh yeah yeah so so thanks to base for their continued um research and advocacy they're the ones that are really driving the philippine bamboo code uh they're doing a ton of um continued professional development learning cpd learning for for mm -hmm. architects and That's engineers yeah super important they, yeah yeah the knowledge they, to have it really on yeah top yeah 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 to make it to make it more accessible and they make it because they're they're f funded by um mm -hmm. the hilti foundation um they can make it affordable or even free right um which has mm -hmm. been really key um in the philippines so yeah. yeah not only for the elite who has like uh, the ways to pay it but everybody who's interested in which is probably much better yeah 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 <laughs> cool that's wow that's um that's really interesting and also how the the uh, you're like totally moved from the u.s to there and and probably you're much happier with what you're doing and a much broader impact also like positive mm. impact being environmental people like but but for sure challenging right because very different the surrounding and let's say uh, socially uh, a total different uh, culture also than in the u.s where anything is available i don't know how available things are there but at the <laughs> end also we really need everything right it's uh, another question another topic another podcast yeah. probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> <Awesome>. simplify <laughs> exactly less yeah. is more um mm -hmm. what's what do you really care about focus on that 
and uh, you yeah. can't have everything, but you can have a lot of things if you want less. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know if you like. We can talk about also the the fourth um, topic, which uh, popped up later, which is a lesson learned um, regarding um, recommendations for for people listening right now. Um, what would you do differently, um, and and why? You know, like uh, <laughs> the hard way is always learning oneself, but uh, sometimes, yeah, people are are kind and 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 uh, share what they had to go through so that others don't have to go through the same thing. The ones who are listening, right? The ones who don't listen. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's life. <laughs> yeah. 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 So lesson learned regarding, um, maybe, uh, uh bamboo, um, things you, you now do differently than you did at the beginning or, or the cooperative also, uh, um, I know personally it's really challenging to, to, to find the right individuals. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if whatever you have there, what yeah. can you share? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I've been thinking hard about this. It's hard to like, <laughs> I, I would, I would say that, um, yeah. Uh, what's been, What's been helpful for us? Um, we have a couple of mantras. One is no, no bamboo enemies. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, interesting. What's a bamboo enemy? <laughs> yeah, no bamboo enemies. I think that uh, for us that means you know, it, yeah, um, it's a reminder uh, that you, we're 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 all ultimately like we're in a small field um, mm -hmm. and we're all trying really hard. Um, and, uh, so sometimes that can come out as competition and there can be, yeah. uh, there can be lots of fear around like, um, stolen ideas and, and things. I don't, you know, yeah, yeah. people are taking Sounds on like risk that. and there's, then there's naturally fear around that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I guess we use it as a mantra just to remind ourselves like, okay, you know, where's this coming from? Is this fear-based? Is this really like something to be worried about? Or, um, are we all in this together? Are we all trying hard, our hardest to like, uh, improve, you know, make, make bamboo a legitimate, like a, a someday, one day, a very conventional material. Um, yeah. not this, yeah. uh, this, you know, step it's exotic. Yeah, it's exotic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's something, um, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. And then, and then like and we went there, we went there with our business and we decided to be co-op model, you know, like we're going to, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's we're just going to keep that. Um, uh, we're going to bake that in. And then, um, what's the other one? Um, oh, also that there are no bamboo emergencies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how's that? So, yeah, yeah, I think you can you can get a bit caught up um in uh oh my gosh, like this is this is a disaster. It's all going it's all going down in flames. Um so uh <laughs> um you know, the first the first infestation that we had to deal with or something like that, like yeah, just just being like, okay, all right, reset like chill a little bit. <laughs> we're, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, there are no bamboo emergencies. Like, how do we help our customers stay calm? How do we like learn together, um, support each other through all of this um, learning that we're doing? So, yeah, yeah, and and that's huge with the team too. Like, our um, our team is lit. They're they're the we're the front lines. Um, they, we're dealing with it all. Um, and so as long as we can kind of keep this in mind, like no bamboo enemies and no bamboo emergencies. Emergency. Um, like, yeah, keeping a good, good positive attitude and, and ultimately like trusting that everyone, while it may not make sense at the time, everyone's really got their best interests or they're trying, they're trying uh, their best. And so we're working on that. Like, I don't know. Does yeah, that help? <laughs> it helps a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it helps a little bit. I think that one of the big challenges not 
just to bamboo, but like everywhere are to work or live or whatever, but with other people because everything is about people, right? And um, yeah. that's it's it's always going to be a challenge. So um, sometimes we prefer uh, people than other people or or whatever. And it's this people business at the end. We have to kind of navigate yeah. through uh, other people because we are people ourselves and um, it's, it's not always easy, right? Sometimes we have a bad day. Sometimes we have a good day. Yeah, <laughs> um, totally. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. like the thorny bamboo. Sometimes you harvest it, yes. no problem. Sometimes you harvest it and you have like three thorns in your finger <laughs> and you're like not so happy. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing here? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why did I plant thorny bamboo? <laughs> or why? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's I, good. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and then as far as like specific things, don't use a metal tank for your for your solution. Those is just not worth it. Use a concrete tank. Do triple line. Like make it make it really really secure. But metal tanks are a waste of time and a lot of a lot of maintenance. Um, <laughs> so because of the corrosion of the salt, yes, yeah, yes, okay, that's a good one. Corrosion. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I, as much as I love Blumiana, um, do your best to maintain those thorns. Um, <laughs> yeah. and if you, if you happen to be in a space where you can grow, um, because you're at a good elevation, um, and mm -hmm. you can, you can branch out and grow asper, uh, do it. <laughs> try another species <laughs> yeah yeah what about yeah. the the bamboo we didn't talk about the bamboo is it slightly running like guadua so clumping running or uh, is it fully no. running or is it fully yeah, clumping both, both blumiana and dendrocalamus asper those are the two kind of mm -hmm. main species in the philippines for construction um are clumping yeah clumping so no running yeah. at all like mm -mm. okay that's easy then to 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 manage because uh, you plant it there and best case it's it's six meters or seven meter diameter and that's it. Yep, that's end right. of the story yeah. in 140 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so you can do alleys. You could like plant on a road. Just thinking, <laughs> you could yeah. plant like an alley of 100 meters, uh, the bamboo on the side, and after uh, 10 years, you have like a beautiful shade, fresh alley, and oh, you can do cool stuff there. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's another thing. A lot of people, I figured talking with a lot of people uh, about bamboo, of course, <laughs> um, that uh, the whole um thing about running bamboo and and clumping bamboo and uh, semi running or semi clumping bamboo is like this big myth of oh bamboo is invasive right mm, <laughs> you know right. it's like no it's not wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not <laughs> uh, there yeah. are different bamboos and uh, every bamboo uh well has a way of growing or or uh and if it's clumping, well, it's clumping. It's, it's a no-brainer. If it's something yeah. in between, well, it will be different. Um, and you just have to understand how it grows, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but those two, because they're tropical, tropical bamboo tend to be more clumping. Um, mm -hmm. So um, makes sense. Um, yeah. And how big does the giant bamboo, or the Dendrocalamus asper, get in the Philippines? How What's the width of like the really big ones? Yeah, fifteen centimeter diameter 15. is is around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. twelve to because fifteen centimeter. I'd say is average. Yeah, fifteen. And because that gets really heavy, right? I mean, that's the that's the yes. downside of the giant bamboo. It's like it's not like the other one where you go like, oh, yeah, I can take two. Like, <laughs> right, it's, right. It's no, thick and two heavy. Two persons per one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, CrossFit in real life. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we found the photo, the video you shared before. I'm going to share it too in the blog post. Um, that um, the video there, you see people harvesting bamboo. Um, I'm not sure if it's the the, the giant that one was or Tanik. Tanik. Yeah. Okay, that was Tanik. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, but that's like, let's say, easier to transport. Of course, when it's full with water, I don't know when you harvest it. Just harvest it specific days regarding on the water. Um, it's heavier. If it has less water, it's it's less heavy, but it has more sugars. So you have to 
later uh, do a little bit more to to um, keep it um, sort of make it uh, live as long as possible. But uh, yeah, um, that's another uh, interesting aspect maybe <laughs> there. Yeah. So you have those two bamboo. Are you um, or is the the by base by Baha'i base by <laughs> uh, organization? Do um, you know if they're like uh, testing also uh, like other bamboos? Uh, for future because it's always good like to have like more yeah. of course than one because you never know it's going to be uh, flowering right or right did, right did you know that in the philippines was it uh it was the local bamboo is is it known or if it does it flower is it a flowering bamboo or or is it yes uh, yeah. yeah, at some point, at some point, there will be a flowering event. Um, <laughs> Do we know I'm any so date? Sorry. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Okay. Um, I have that's to, okay. I have to get going. Yeah. Um, okay. 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 Oh, pretty, that's good. So. <laughs> that's good. So uh, we can we can close here, Amy. Um, uh, yeah, we've been talking for a little bit more than an hour, so I really appreciate your time, all the insights. Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, we're going to share this on thinkbamboo.org and the Think Bamboo um, channel on YouTube, as well as Spotify, of course. Um, any closing words, Amy? <laughs> Just thank you again. Um, thank you for all the effort you're putting into this uh, podcast and getting the word out about bamboo and the wide variety of people you have hosted on this show, JJ. It's um, really great. Um, so, yeah, happy to be here. Happy to be a part of it. Awesome. Really think uh, you're doing something truly unique there. And, and I'm super excited also maybe uh, in, in two, three years again, see how things are working, uh, what's new. And um, okay. have a great week and um, let's stay in contact. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Take Come care. to the Philippines. <laughs> I will try to. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>